Hi there guys, welcome back to another video. I am sorry if I sound a bit strange in this video. I think I am losing my voice, but we're just gonna keep rolling with it because my timeline doesn't stop just because I'm poorly, unfortunately. Today is gonna be another video in my wedding series and I'm really, really looking forward to this one. I've had to wait quite a bit for things to arrive and for the time to actually do all of the things to share it with you, but when I first decided that I wanted to do my own invites, I searched high and low. I searched Pinterest, I searched YouTube, you know, everywhere I could find to find some inspiration and to kind of validate myself and say, yes, Kay, you can do it by yourself and you can save a heck of a lot of money too, but if I'm honest, those videos were quite lacking and the ones I did find were good, but I felt like they didn't give me what I wanted to see, if that makes sense. So I'm going to try and share as much as I can of how I'm making my own invites from scratch, but obviously I've got to be careful for my own privacy reasons, so I can't be sharing the venue and I can't share the date or anything like that. But I will share as much as I possibly can and kind of give you guys some insight into how I've done it and how easy it has been too. And I say easy, it's easy if you're someone who likes to faff. <laughs> that's the thing, I feel like that's a prerequisite to making your own invites. I am a faffer, queen faffer over here, I need my crown. Um, I do love things like this, so I've thrived with it. But if you're one of those people that's like no nonsense, then it's probably not the video for you. But I thought I would start off by sharing with you, I sound horrendous. <laughs> I thought I would share with you the company I use. So this isn't sponsored by any means, I'm gonna have a drink. <laughs> The company that I used for my invites, which, like I say, it's not sponsored, it's just this is the company I went with. My really best friend, in fact one of my bridesmaids, she's a photographer and she recommended this company and there was another one that I can't remember the name of, but I will ask her and I will leave it on the screen for you guys, for anyone who is thinking of doing the same thing. So I used printed.com and you can send off for like a little wedding sample pack. When I was looking, I started to feel really overwhelmed really fast and the thing that I was overwhelmed with was A, the size of the invites and B, what paper to use because the paper depended on the cost and also I wanted them to feel good, like I wanted them to feel like proper invites. I printed quite a few off myself at home using my printer and my like white blue paper <laughs> and I can just be honest with you guys, they look nothing like the real thing. They just look so much nicer on real paper. <laughs> so I will show you a close up of all the different papers because this is something else that I really struggle to find. So hopefully this helps you guys and if you are doing your own invites I highly recommend to just get your own sample pack from whatever printing company you're going to use because it does make it so much easier and you don't have to gamble um, quite as much. <laughs> so this is what the sample pack looks like from printed and then inside it's just got the paper, the weight that the paper is which is an important part. So Tintorino Gesso, this is the one that I chose mainly because it said it's perfect for wedding invitations. So that's the first one. Then we've got Rivers Shetland, excuse me if I say these wrong, which is 250, which is thinner. You can tell the difference. This is more like card and this is more papery. This is the one that I nearly, nearly went for. And I'm glad now that I didn't because it's more of a white and I prefer the cream. So that's that one and that one. Then we've got Aquarello, which again, it's just a more cream. So it depends what your vibe is and what you're going for. Then this one says, hello, I'm cream. But as you can see, this is much more yellow than this one. This is actually really nice, but it's got no grain in it. Then we've got Fresso Gesso, <laughs> which this is a really nice paper. This is like a hammered texture. I actually do really like this one. I think, let me just find my one. I think I do kind of prefer it to the one that I chose, but then again, it is white and I did like the cream vibe. So just just something to think about. And we've got Ice Gold, which has like got a bit of a, a sheen to it. I don't know if you can see that. We've got Laid, which is one I nearly, nearly, nearly went with and I'm glad I didn't because it looks more like office style to me. It's got like lines running through. We've got Lux, which is one that I would never have used. This is more for like if you're doing your own um, menu settings and things like that. So this is like a card basically. Um, we've got Craft Paper, which again, it depends on your wedding. If you're going for more of a rustic theme, this could be really cute. Magnetic, which I think is cool, you know. <laughs> so if you're doing Save the Dates, this could be really, really good. We've got Netuno which is, they're all pretty much the same, like they're all paper, right? But it's about feeling them. This has got lines in. Pearl Oyster, which is a very sheeny one. 
to me this would make a really nice envelope we've got pearl polar which again another sheeny one then the last thing here is vellum and this one is important and it's something that i it was an oversight of mine i wish i'd have got heavier vellum this one is 150 gsm and it's a really nice thickness you can get it in all the different colors obviously but i I scrimped on this and I wish I hadn't so I will share a bit more with you in a minute when we get to that but that's all of the paper options which I hope was helpful for any of you who are out there doing your own invites like I was so this was actually this sounds so much like I'm like proper sponsoring this company but if I'm honest I am really impressed with them so I don't mind and um, this was free which I think is amazing as well especially when you are penny pinching it does help so much having things for free so that's that and then obviously the thing I said to you guys I was stressed about was the sizing so so what I did is I found out what an average size for invitations was and I printed them off and then I wrote on them so I could see how big things were going to be. So this is the size of my RSVP card and this is the size of my invites. It was important to me that I could tell like the difference in sizes because you can't always tell when you're just looking on a screen. I'm a very visual person so everything I do has to be something I can physically hold and physically see and they were the sizes I was happy with so I went with five by seven and then an A6, which is 105 by 148 centimeters. So hopefully that helps if you are struggling to know what sizes to do. So I will share with you now how I did them and what program I used because I think that could be really, really helpful and it's something else that is super simple, but to anyone who has no like graphic designer knowledge or you know, you're not a YouTuber and you don't make YouTube thumbnails, <laughs> you might not know this program. So hopefully you find this bit helpful. So the program that I used is called Canva and what I did is at the top when you first go on, you can choose what size. So I chose the sizes that I just said and that makes it the perfect size for you. And then I just started going to town. I found lots of different invites and picked what I liked off each one. And then I just kind of mix and matched it. I can't share with you my illustration, but I did print out a picture of the place we're getting married and I used some tracing paper, traced over it and I scanned it in. I did use Photoshop to get rid of the background, but Canva does have like a thing where you can pay to take the background off. So that is useful or you can pay someone else to do an illustration for you, which the quotes I got were like 75 pounds. So it just depends if that's an element that you want. And then this was the other bit. So I did the first page, which is like, we're getting married. <laughs> and the next page, which is the wedding details, which I've had to block quite a bit out as you can see, but I just wanted to make sure that I had my RSVP, the directions, accommodation, and then a note on gifts as we're not asking for gifts. Then right down at the bottom, which I'll show you in person, we've got the timeline, which I thought was really cute and an element that I really wanted to add in. Then the last page there, these are like, um, uh, it's on two sides, the menu. So we have three options. That's just one of the things with the venue we chose. So that was how I pretty much did it. And then the RSVP was the same vibe, put in the correct measurements, which took me a while to figure out, but we got there in the end. And this is the way that I've set out my RSVPs. And that's how I did my menu choices, which was something that I was really struggling with. Then the last thing which I really, really wanted, which I felt like made them look so much more professional, is envelope liners, which is an option on printed.com. And it was easier than I thought. You can get these templates from um, printed.com and then you just download them and you can just literally put whatever you want. So the way I did it is if you copy it and then paste it on top of your image and just bring it to the front so you can see. But as you can see, everything that I wanted, which is just this little flower, is inside the requirements, which is important because when it gets printed, all of this gets cut off. So it just meant I didn't have to do it by myself and that was a really good thing. So that's pretty much how I did the technical part and I will show you what the invites look like now they are printed. So here is the printed result. As you can see, it does take away a lot. And once we've had the wedding, I will show you my proper invite but this is what they look like. I was super happy with the paper and the quality. I think it looks amazing and I'm really, really happy with it. The one thing I did, which was a mistake, is I used um, a different thickness of paper for all the top page and the bottom. And it is a slightly different size, which is a little bit annoying, but it's what it is. It's one of those things when you're just kind of doing things on a whim. Um, but yeah, super happy with those. And the RSVP turned out really well as well. The thing that's under there is just our address for people to send this back to us. And then I will show you the back. The back worked out really well and everything's sized just right so people could put their initials so I can tell who's who and who wants what and put that on my little uh, sheet that I've got to fill out. 
And then over here, we've got the wax melts that I bought. These are from Etsy and I will link them below. So we've got roses because roses are the flowers we're using. And I like a theme, you know, I wanted it to be like an elegant theme and I think I've nailed it. Um, I'm really happy with these. And there was a lot of different options for wax melts. I was gonna do them myself, but you'll see in a second, the way I'm doing my invites meant that it was just gonna be a real faff. We have cats and it was not gonna work out. So these have like a sticky back. You just peel that off and stick them and I'm super happy with the quality of those. We also have ribbon. This is probably the most expensive part. So if you're on a budget, do not use silk ribbon. Um, it's super expensive and it's worth it to me. Like I'm happy and I think a lot of people will keep our invites as keepsakes. Everyone we're inviting are like family and really important people in our lives. So hopefully it's as important to them as it is to us. And if not, then at least I know I'm happy with what I did. So this again is from Etsy. And I'll leave it linked down below. We've gone through three reels of this. This is the uh, we've done one already and then these are the last two hopefully we don't need any more <laughs> the last thing here is the vellum which i will show you and i'll show you the problem i've got with it the other thing i very nearly forgot to share with you guys are my envelope liners so i am going to trim the top off to make it a like a circle shape just because the envelopes themselves are circle shaped as you can see and it just means that it's not pointed that just makes it like look a bit more put together I feel like if you have pointy envelopes of course keep it pointy but I just felt like for me it just made it look a little bit better on the eye um I got this paper in the laid paper which is like lines I think you can see it which I do really like for the envelope liners I didn't get it in cream though I did get it in white and I think it just helps to enhance these colors which I'm having roses I'm having like this sand color rose some nudes and some white so I loved this and I got this for free on Canva so it was just yeah, the whole thing was just really easy and simple. And while I'm here, I'll show you our save the dates because I don't think I've ever shared these. <laughs> I got these done by someone on Etsy, which I do regret because the coloring isn't great. And I totally could have just done these on Canva and put them through printed and done them myself, but still it is an option. Um, we just have this picture from a photo shoot we did with my friend. If you have an engagement shoot, they make amazing save the dates. So we just have our date up at the top and then over on the other side, it just says, we hope you can join us on our wedding day, Tom and Catherine, and then there is like the venue obviously in the date. Um, so it just, it is just a really nice little touch and I really like our save the dates and they've been really helpful for older family members <laughs> and just family in general. It's been really nice to go to their houses and see them on their fridges. Um, and it makes me feel really happy because I love this picture, I really do. Oh my goodness me. I can't believe my voice is going for this video. <laughs> I got this from Amazon and it was a real steal. It was super cheap for like 50 pages. I'm only sending out, I think it's 35 invites. Like I said, a lot of people that are coming a family so that kind of bulks the numbers up, but it means that we don't have to send out as many invites, which is a good thing because that saves us money. Um, so anyway, I thought I would do it myself. You can actually buy these pre-cut and pre-folded and I was so tempted, but it was about 20 pounds for like 10. And this was, I can't remember exactly, I feel like maybe 15 pounds for 50 pages. Um, I might be wrong with that, but I will leave the link to the one I used down below. It's very thin, that's the only problem. But then again, you think like people probably are just gonna put this piece in the bin. But when you compare the thickness of this to this, there is no comparison. So if I could go back in time, I would get 150 GSM vellum because I think it would just be a lot easier to use and to handle as well. So that's all of my faffy bits. Um, now what we've got to do is put them together. But before I do that, I want to show you how I did my envelopes because that was a really important piece to me. As you guys know, if you've been following me on Instagram, I have been practicing my handwriting. <laughs> I've used this book and there's another one, which is Anne of Green Gables. I'll leave them linked below as well because it's helped so much with my handwriting. There's basically a page for every single letter and then at the back there are sentences. I spent an entire afternoon just watching Desperate Housewives doing this and it's improved my handwriting tenfold. So I kind of mixed between using the style from that book and the styles from Google that have more of a flourish 
to create my own invites because that was the other thing that makes them look next level is like really beautiful handwriting which I didn't do on my save the dates and I really wish I had. So I will show you the process of how I do it. So first off I just use a ruler and I just line however many lines I'm going to need. I have everyone's addresses already from when I sent out the save the dates so some people have three lines, some have four, some have five. I just make sure it's centered onto the envelope and then I just go for it. So like I said just using a mixture of a calligraphy style from the book and calligraphy styles that have a more of a flourish and beauty to them from Google and then I just go for it. My brain just knows now how to do it <laughs> which is a good thing um, and it has got easier with time but I would say if you are someone who likes the fancier things in life really give yourself a go with this because it's so much fun and as you can see it turned out really really well and I'm super happy so all of my invites have this really pretty handwriting which makes me feel like I'm of Green Gables and I am very happy about that. <laughs> So that's the envelope um, and that's the final piece. So now all I've got to do is put them all together. Well, don't I look professional in my glosses? <laughs> so as you can see, they are done. I am super happy with them. I've already sent out quite a few to people in our lives physically. The people who I see all the time, I, I just love watching people open things that I've made. I feel so proud about it. And so it's just been a really nice thing to be able to go and see people, give them the invitations and just see them open it. I always say the hardest thing for them to do is open it, but the harder thing to do is put it back together again because they've all done the same thing. They've all been like, oh my God, how do I open it? Um, you know, like it's a... <laughs> Like it's just its own, its own entity um, but it's been really fun to do that and to watch the process. So I've got about 25 I think more to do. So what I've done is just done myself a production line. I've got all my envelopes here, I've got all of my other bits and bobs and I'm just going to keep doing exactly what I've just shown you guys. So I've got my P. Sherman 42 Wally Way Sydney envelope here. If you know what that's from then you get bonus points from me. <laughs> it's the address that always comes into my head whenever I need a fake address. Um, the envelope liners work an absolute dream. I've just used a PVA glue like Pritt stick to stick them down. That was the other thing that I've learned from watching people open them. The first ones I didn't stick down and people tended to take everything out, including the envelope liner, which <laughs> is just like, 
Okay, so stick them down. Yes, note from me. Um, I'm really happy with these. Obviously, it takes away from the invite, not being able to see the illustration of the venue, but you'll be able to see those in the future. And it, let me tell you, it does make such a big difference. Um, but whatever you choose to do, having these little vellum envelope things, it just makes it the next level. Like, I think it's just such a simple touch. And if you even do the cheap ones like I did, it just, just enhances them a little bit. The way you could make this cheaper is by doing the wax seals yourself, buying a little kit. I didn't think, to be honest, that that was going to work out cheaper, but I do have cats and it was going to be a lot of faff, and so I thought I'd better just pay someone else to do that part for me. And you can use wax thread instead of the ribbon, because like I said, the ribbon is what's hiked the cost of these up quite a lot, but it does look special. And keep yourself one, so one for your pictures on your wedding morning so you've got memories of all the hard work you put into them. So my P. Sherman, this is mine that's going to be there on my wedding day <laughs> so I can get pictures of it. The other thing I want to say before I go is light yourself a really nice candle or get a scent that feels like a wedding scent to you. The one I've got in there is peony and white cotton and it smells divine. I love it so much and if the place we're going to get married lets us, I'm going to have that burning on the day. So I feel like doing all of my wedding prep and having this scent going, it's just like in the future it's just going to be such a comforting scent for me just to bring me back to this really special day, which is a really special day. So I'm going to finish these off and then me and Dom are heading off to the registry office today because we are going to give notice, which means we can actually get married. So in England you have to give notice at least, I think it's at least a month if not three months before to say you intend to get married and then they will let you get married. Otherwise it's just a big expensive day with no wedding, which is not what we're going for here. <laughs> But it's been really fun to bring you guys along. I hope that you enjoyed the process of watching me, you know, do all of my invites. I'm not going to make you sit watching me do the rest of them because it's the exact same process on repeat. One thing I will say is the ones I sent to really close family and friends, the people I was giving it to in person, I just kind of put one of these on too, just to give it that extra touch. I wouldn't do this if I was sending them in the mail because they aren't sealed onto the envelope. If I'd have got my own, you know, sealer, maybe so, but I feel like they would just pop off and that's just a waste of money. So not doing that for the rest of these because these ones are all going to go in the post, but it just makes it an extra special touch, you know, for your family and friends who are also hopefully really excited for you as well. But I am going to go, I feel like all I've done is talk and my poor throat needs to rest <laughs> so that I actually have a voice for the rest of my videos this week. I really hope you enjoyed this. If you want to follow along my wedding plans from the moment we got engaged up until now, I will leave a playlist down below so you can follow along. But let me know if you did find this helpful and if there's anything else you want me to share about wedding planning in the future. I appreciate not all of you are planning a wedding, but some of you may find this interesting and useful. And it just goes to show that it's worth trying. You know, it is so worth trying. I've got so much more satisfaction out of this than paying someone else to do it for me. <laughs> but thank you so much for watching. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new. And I will see you all again in my next video. I hope you all have an absolutely amazing rest of your week. Mm -hmm.